on Sportsnet. Brought to you by your local independently owned home hardware and building center location. Homeowners helping homeowners. Welcome to Rogers Center. The Mariners won the game last night on four runs and 14 hits, a 4-3 ball game. Eric Wedge's ball club playing good baseball. They've now surpassed their win total from a year ago. Doubles a home run. He's driven in three. Look at his OPS, 1.188. He's the third baseman. Jesus Montero, the DH tonight. Canadian Michael Saunders has had a good run here at Rogers Center, including a grand slam back in April. Miguel Olivo, Mike Carp, Trayvon Robinson starting in left field tonight, and the slip fielding Brendan Ryan playing it short. Ricky Romero needs a good outing tonight. He hasn't pitched since he worked just one plus innings. That was against the Rays back on September the 2nd. Nine days between outings, the longest stretch that Romero has had in between starts in his career. These are hoping the extra rest will be helped pull Ricky out of this slump that he has been in. It's just been all kind of problems for Romero. He's just going to have to try and figure it out. Defensively behind Ricky Romero, a couple of new looks tonight. Anthony Ghost makes his first start in left field. He is Primarily a center fielder. He's played well in right. Tonight he gets to start in left. Rasmus and Sierra round out the outfielder. Danny Echeverria starting at second base for the second time this season. He'll team up with Junior Escobar. Lorian and Carnesione at the corners. And J.P. Aaron Sebia flashing the signs for Ricky Romero. Interesting to watch these two. Both of them played on the other side of the diamond. Earlier, Ghost was in right field yesterday. Left field tonight. Echeverria third base and now over at second base. So Ricky Romero anxious to pick up his first win. He hasn't won a game since June 22nd. A stretch of 15 straight starts. Dustin Ackley takes one just off the plate outside. Ackley got things started in the first inning for the Mariners last night. He had a double and came around to score the first of two runs. Seattle would score in the first. There's a good pitch down and away. It's a ball and a strike. And one of the reasons why the Blue Jays gave Ricky Romero an extra few days off, they skipped his start. They wanted him to get a little bit stronger. Felt that he might have been wearing down just a little bit. Fly ball to left field. Anthony Ghost backs up a few steps and makes the catch. One down. So let's take a look at the scouting report for Ricky Romero, brought to you by Home Hardware. Homeowners helping homeowners. His fastball's got great movement. I think the whole key for Romero is getting ahead with that four-seam fastball and then dropping that change in that curveball off on the batter. Be able to throw it close enough to the plate that they can swing at it. He'll also cut his fastball at times, but for him, it's just about power and getting that fastball over. Franklin Gutierrez, four for 12 against Romero. He's homered against Ricky. Fastball downstairs. Gutierrez, terrific fielder, committed his first error last night. In a span of over 300 games, he had 864 total chances before he committed that error last night. He is a he is a good player who has battled all kind of injuries in his career. He has been with the Mets, and he had some injuries there. He was with the Indians, played for Eric Wedge in Cleveland when he was there. And this year, it's been a couple of stints on the DL already. There's a good changeup, and Romero will get swings on the changeup if he throws enough fastballs close in that strike zone. And that's a good one. His stuff is electric. You just have no idea where it's going to go. Veteran teams have been taking that changeup. But if he throws a lot of fastballs, like you said, he's going to get a lot of swings and misses. And that's a changeup for a strikeout. Ricky Romero picks up his first strikeout of the ballgame. You know, it doesn't do any good to have a good changeup if you can't get it close enough to the plate where they will offer at it. That time, good action on that ball. That wall ball looked like it cut a little bit also. So Gutierrez is down, and there's two outs, and Kyle Seager, we mentioned how hot Seager is against the Blue Jays this year. He had three hits in the game last night, including 
his 18th home run. Been their best hitter. 18 homers. He's driven in 81 runs. Here's the old one. Upstairs. The Mariners scored two in the first last night. That was the 82nd time this season they've scored in the first inning. And when they score in the first inning, they are tough. 27 and 20 when they score in the first inning. Upstairs, two and one. They came out swinging yesterday. They were all over Brandon Morrow's fastball. He just couldn't command it. it. Couldn't get it down. Didn't have the normal zip to it that we have seen from Morrow in the past. And the Mariners were waiting for him. Jeff Farrell felt like it was a bad omen when Dustin Ackley hit a double on a breaking ball with two strikes in the first inning. There's a shot past Echeverria into right. Kyle Sager continues to wear out the Blue Jays. This guy is the greatest hitter I have ever seen against the Blue Jays this year. Every single one of it is at bats. He's balanced. He takes good swings and he finds a hole. That's a pretty good approach right there against the left-hander. Seager picks up his 12th hit of the season against the Blue Jays. Just a 240 hitter against a left-handed pitcher. That time he looked like a 400 hitter. Jesus Montero tonight Montero is serving as the DH he was behind the plate last night Mariners have a trio of catchers that proven to be a pretty good combination Montero tonight's catcher Miguel Olivo and John Jaso who was the DH in last night's game There's a strike Montero, a highly touted prospect out of the Yankees system. He was acquired by Seattle in a trade that sent Michael Pineda to New York. Cut on and missed 0 oh and 2. Chris Chambliss was telling me, the hitting coach of the Seattle Mariners, when we were out in Seattle, he says, when Montero's thinking about the whole field and trying to hit the ball into the gaps in left center and right center field. That's where he's going to be a good hitter. His first two pitches right there against Romero looked like he was trying to pull it and he was pulling off of it. Well, you might think that's a pretty good approach for just about everybody, but it's not true. Montero is one of those guys that has power. He's kind of like J.P. Aaron Sebia. When J.P. stays on the ball and drives it to the alley in right center, that's when he's most dangerous. Yeah, he'll keep his front shoulder in a little bit better. He's got opposite field power. No question. He doesn't have to hit, pull the ball to hit the ball out of the ballpark. There goes Sager. Cut out and miss. Montero strikes out. Good inning for Ricky Romero. He records a couple of strikeouts and... Looks like he has got good stuff early on. Breaking ball gets Montero.
with runners in scoring position and they left six men stranded. They just couldn't take advantage of some leadoff opportunities. Top of the order. Lori Rasmus and Karnas Schoen. Edmund is playing first base tonight. You know, Escobar moves into the cleanup spot. Then it's Lind Aaron Cedia, Moises Sierra, and Anthony Ghost. Over his last five games since coming up for the minor leagues, he's seven for 14. A home run, five RBIs, and he has four stolen bases. And Danny Echeverria is playing at second base tonight, and the rookies are manning the bottom third of the lineup. Should be very interesting for Kevin Millwood, who snapped a winless streak of six starts his last time now. He located his fastball, and his pitch is much better when he beat the Red Sox. Six good innings, one run ball to win just his fifth game of the season. That was the tenth time this year that Millwood has given up one run or less in a start. So he still has a lot left to his career. 37-year-old Kevin Millwood making his 423rd start of his big league career. Brett Lorry, the leadoff man. Bounces it over the mound. Dustin Ackley in time, one down. Take a look defensively behind Seattle's pitcher, Kevin Millwood, and this is a good defense. They really have done a great job all season long. They've committed just 57 errors. Robinson, Gutierrez, and Sanders in the outfit. Brendan Ryan might be the best shortstop in all of baseball, day in and day out. Justin Ackley at second, Seeger at third, Carpet first, and Miguel Olivo behind the plate. And there's the man that you were just talking about last night. The most unlikely player to commit an error in last night's game. The only error in the whole contest. Bobby Erasmus goes after the first pitch. Ryan is out. He'll give way to Robinson, the left fielder. Two pitches, two outs. Making quick work. Kevin Millwood. Let's take a look at the scouting report for Kevin Millwood. He's got a little bit of everything. He doesn't throw as hard as he used to, but he's smart and he can move that ball around. We'll go to his breaking ball second and third times through. He's got a very slow curve ball. He'll cut the fastball at times also, but he's very intelligent and he does a good job of reading bats. Kevin Millwood is third on the active strikeout list. Only Andy Pettit, who's currently on the DL and CC Sabathia, have more strikeouts among active pitchers than Kevin Millwood. He has 2,080 strikeouts. At one time, he was more of a power pitcher when he was with Atlanta. And Carnacio not real happy with that cut fastball, thinking that it was outside. But he would come right after you, Miller, with power stuff. Now he's got to add and subtract to move the ball around. Well, he certainly was surrounded by great pitchers when he first came up. Came up with the Braves in 97. Had a rotation that included John Smoltz, Tom Glavin, Denny Nagel, and Greg Maddox. That's a pretty good place to start. Outside. Two balls and two strikes. He was like John Smoltz, I think, when he was younger. Threw too hard. Everything was a little extra on it. But now as he has gotten a little bit older, a little bit smarter, and he slowed down just a little bit, still can pitch, but he needs to locate. He came up when he was 22 years old. The Braves won 101 games that year. And he always was around great. That ball is hit to Brendan Ryan. Deep from shortstop, a good inning for Kevin Millwood. Just seven pitches, and he sets down the Blue Jays in order.
great start to his season. His first 15 starts with an 8 1 with a big ERA. And he has really fallen on hard times over his last 13 starts. He's 0 and 12 with an ERA nearly 8. And Ricky Romero has been baffled by the turnaround. Yeah, 0 and 12 with those last 13. A couple of things have to happen, I think, at 0 and 12 stretch. You have to pitch poorly, and he has. But you also have to have bad luck, and he's had some of that too because he has thrown some games where he could have won it. He threw seven innings at Oakland, gave up one run, no decision. Seven innings, gave up three runs versus the Yankees, took a loss. Cleveland he gave up one run in six innings, took a loss in that game. So there were some bad games mixed in with some bad luck for Romero, and that's how you end up losing 12. Canadian Michael Saunders with a 250 average. Saunders is from Victoria, B.C. He mentioned his two homer game back in April. Ricky Romero actually started that ball game. Oh, no. He appeals to third, and Gary Darling says no swing. Michael Saunders hit a home run in the ninth inning as the Mariners tied it up, and then he won it with a grand slam in the tenth off Louis Perez. He's been a hot hitter over his last 11 games. He's picked up 15 hits. Saunders and Seeger, <laughs> the two S boys versus the Blue Jays this year, have worn them out. The curveball that Michael Saunders fouls on. Boy, Ricky Romero, we mentioned John Farrell decided to give him some time to regroup a bit. And he is really anxious to finish up on a positive note this season. Looks like the umpire had a thought about calling that a strike. Paul Emmo behind the plate give it a good look, but thought it was off the plate outside. Look it over the shoulder of Jay Pierre and Sevia thought he was going to call it. Inside, it's full count. A couple of starts ago against the Yankees, Romero was working on seven days rest, and John Farrell and the staff felt like that really helped him to throw the seven innings and give up just the two runs to the Yankees. Felt there was a little bit more power in his legs, and a little bit more power in his pitches. Broken bat, backhanded by Laurie. Oh, what a play! Not only did he make a fine stop. But he reached back for a little extra to throw it on the fly to and kind of showed and gunned down Michael Saunders who can run. Yeah, the Blue Jays will play their infield deep with two strikes. You'll see how deep Laurie is playing. That ball is off the end of the bat, so it's got a lot of English on it. He snabs it, and then watch how he plants the right foot to get a lot on it and uncorks a strike across the diamond to get Saunders. Boy, a strong arm, and in front of showing with a good stretch, that's a big out for Ricky Romero. Run the count to a full count, and looked like he might give up an infield hit, but in front of showing helped out with a little scoop of the short hop, and Laurie made a fine grab on the backhand. Catcher Miguel Olivo. Hits it high and deep to left field. Anthony Ghost watches as... That ball just clears the fence in left field for Olivo, his 10th home run of the season. And the Mariners have taken a 1 0 lead. Romero asking J. Pierre and Seavey about that last pitch, and Olivo. His 10th home run, we mentioned the catchers have done a good job. They put up some good numbers. It looked like he might have cut that fastball in just a little bit. It was right into the swing plane of Miguel Olivo. High and deep to left field. Now, this is where Romero's got to bring it all back together and get back into that groove. There were times over his last few starts where he'd give up a hit here, or give up a, a hit there, and the whole inning would fall apart. That's where he's got to get back out there and just concentrate. Mike Carp with a line drive into center field. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. You just have to minimize the damage, and the last thing you want to think about is here we go again. Right. He had trouble last time out after having a good first inning and then couldn't get out of the second. And it just seemed to snowball on him instead of just taking the deep breath and saying, okay, 
Let's don't worry about what just happened. How am I going to get this guy out right here? And I think that's where he runs into problems where he worries about that kind of stuff. And before you know it, three or four runs are on the board. Trayvon Robinson is switch hitter. McClang left field, batting right handed against Ricky Romero. Upstairs. 231 on the season for Robinson. Robinson turned 25 on the 1st of September. Got a little taste of the big leagues last year. Played in 44 games, a total of 143 at bats. Hit 210 with a couple of home runs. Good run a little bit, play some outfield. Switch hitter. There's a line drive over the mound into center field. Carp will stop at second. So that's three straight hits after one out here in the second inning. Great play by Lori to open up the inning and then a home run single single. You have to keep telling yourself, okay, I'm one pitch away from getting out of this inning. That time instead of a sharp off speed pitch, that time it just seemed to float up there for Robinson. First and second, one out. Romero still has to have that thought. Hey, I'm a double play away from getting yep. out of this inning. One pitch. Make one good pitch and let your defense do the rest. Brendan Ryan, everyday shortstop, batting 196. One nothing Seattle. Goes after that first pitch. You and I have both played, so we understand what it is to go out and have some struggles on the field. And the last thing you can think about is mechanics. But you can't think, well, my arm is in the wrong spot. You have to just think about executing. You've done your work. He's had extra side sessions. Just get into the game and enjoy the game. Yeah. That's, get a pitch in your mind and execute. That's all the stuff that you do on your side days. Encarnacion over on the warning track. Can't get there in time. The pop-up wasn't hit that high. But you could see his focus and... His effort to catch that ball. He knows Ricky Romero needs an out. Yeah, he needs an out right here. And he's playing off the bag because there's runners at first and second. Very determined look on his face to try and pick up his pitcher. But you're right. That's all the kind of stuff you do in between your starts. It's like a hitter. He goes down to the batting cage. He can think about where his hands are, where his weight shift is. All of that. You can't do it when you get into the game because the game's too fast. 0-2, oh one out. Hit hard, but foul. Yeah, anytime you start thinking about the numbers and thinking about where my arm should be and if I should get my hand out in front, maybe I'm standing on the wrong side of the rub. You can't do that in the game. I mean, you, I have done it. I don't know about you, but I've done that at plate, and you're beat. You have no chance to succeed. Every time I did, the ball was by me. And it took me a while to figure out that that's you, you can't think like that. All you got to do is concentrate on that baseball. Another 0 2 pitch. Aaron Sabia holds on to the foul tip. Brendan Ryan is asking whether or not that ball may have hit the ground, but he'll pack the lumber back to the dugout. That's the second out of the inning. And that looked like a curveball from Romero right there. And it's close enough where with two strikes. Ryan has to offer out it. How about Jay Pierre and Sevier going down into the dirt to get that one? He knows where that one is, and clearly it went right into his glove. Good call by Paul Emmel. There's not a guy on this team that doesn't want Ricky Romero to break out of this. And we saw it with Encarnacion. JP did a good job of corralling that foul tip. Now there are two outs. That's the Knackley takes the strike. Ball on a strike. Ricky Romero just wants to be able to take something positive out of this second half of the season. He was eight and one at one point, as we mentioned, and 
it looked like he was headed for his best win total of his career. He wasn't throwing like we have seen him in the past, but he was still winning in the first half. Snap throw to first, and good tag by Encarnacion. Robinson just barely back ahead of the tag. If that doesn't tell you that these guys want to help him out, the ball was a little low at first base. So Encarnacion had to keep the glove up high as that ball bounced to him, and that didn't allow him to get that tag down quick enough. Well, I tell you what, he still might have been out. Looked like Robinson hadn't made contact with the bag before Encarnacion swiped at him. Two and one, two outs. Just off the plate. John Fale, Bruce Walton, very anxious observers is Ricky Ramirez trying to get things sorted out. There's a high drive to right. Moises Sierra has a bead on it. Good job by Ricky Romero. He gave up the home run, but leaves a pair of base runners. Blue Jays are down one nothing. Yunel Escobar, the cleanup hitter, will start it off. Adam Lynn, and then J.P. Aaron Sebia. home run you can win big audio home theater systems and big tvs like an 80 inch sharp aqua spectrum to enter visit hit a home run with sharp.ca cleanup hitter is Yunel escobar batting 255 escobar had a pair of hits in last night's game You now drove in the first Blue Jays run with a single into center field in the first. Then he had a leadoff double in the fourth. That was a real problem for the Blue Jays last night. They had a pair of leadoff doubles and a two base air to start an inning. And they only cashed in one of those base runners. That was a stickler to the manager. He spoke about that today uh, with the media about being able to manufacture some runs, especially when you get that. Lead off batter to second base. You've got to be able to score. I think stickler was a nice word. Thank you. It kind of <laughs> stuck in his craw a little bit. But you get a lead off double in a one run game. You've got to catch him in somehow. Yeah. Have that guy behind him just punch the ball to the right side. Especially late. Uh, each one of those three came late in the ball game. That off speed pitch is popped up. Foul ground. The third baseman Seeger is there. Makes the catch. You know, and wouldn't you know if the Blue Jays would end up losing the game by one run? And their record in one run games this year have not been very good. 11 and 22. 
that would classify as not very good. And it's the little things like getting a runner over at that time or bunting them here or hit and run there or making out there, make a play, or you don't make a play. All those factors add into 11 and 22 record in one run games. So one out. Blue Jays have yet to get a base runner aboard against Kevin Millwood. And there's a first pitch strike. Talk about one run games. The Baltimore Orioles are 25 and 7 in one run games. And there's the big difference in everybody says, well, your run differential isn't very good. Well, you know what? Their win differential is very good. And you can't give all of the credit, I think, to the bullpen because Baltimore bullpen has been great. But what about what do they do in the first inning? Maybe you get that guy over. Or you come up with a clutch two out base hit in the first inning and your pitching staff makes it hold up. I mean, it's a it's a something that the whole team does. A lot of times, excuse me, Buck, we're, we're so quick. Oh, they've got a good record in one run games. Oh, their bullpen must be great. Yeah, there's I, a lot of things that factor into that. There's a lot of things. One ball, two strikes to Adam Lynn. Popped him up, center field. Gutierrez lost it for a minute, but then he found it. He threw his hands out to the side, suggesting he wasn't really sure where it was, but he stayed with it. Twilight. <laughs> Did you see it? That's where outfielders will need a lot of help from their corner guys. They'll help them. Yeah, you see, the lights haven't taken full effect here at Rogers Center in that light sky. That baseball gets lost up there in a hurry. Veteran outfielders like Gutierrez will look to the spot where they anticipate that ball will show up again, and that time it did. Two down now, the catcher, J.P. Aaron Sebia. Boy, Millwood, I mean, he understands how you pitch. First pitch strikes. He's in his 16th year. Six for six in first pitch strikes. You know, and it's not very fast. I mean, it's 87, 89 miles an hour with that fastball, but he's putting it in a good spot. Well, so many of the great Braves pitching staffs had pitchers that had great deliveries. I mean, you think of Maddox and Glavin, Smoltz. They all really sound fundamentally. There's another pop up down the right side. And Michael Saunders, he didn't see it. He saw it for a while and then lost it, continued to go after it, and you can see he's shaking his head as well. He lost that ball that was popped up down the right field line, ended up in foul territory. Had a long way to go. You can see the ball pop down the right field. You see Saunders not real sure of himself and then finds it and can't come over. But he found it a little bit too late. See a little hesitation right there, and then he picks it back up. He calls off his second baseman. And with those long strides, he should be able to make that play, but he just can't. And you can see Ackley was there aware that the outfielders are having a trouble early in this game, and Ackley had a better angle at it. Just too far away from him. It's a very good fielding team, the Seattle Mariners. Sound yeah. fundamentally. They've committed the fewest errors in the majors. There's a high fly ball to left. That'll stay in the ballpark. Trayvon Robinson is there, and Millwood has another good inning. He's retired all six Blue Jays he's faced so far. The Mariners have a one nothing lead.
The Toronto Blue Jays would like to congratulate Greg Hamilton and the Canadian Junior National Team for bringing home the silver medal at the IBAF World Junior Baseball Championships. The national junior team lost to USA 6-2 in the gold medal game in this past weekend in Seoul, South Korea. Baseball Canada has now medaled in the last three major international tournaments. So congratulations to Baseball Canada and the Blue Jays. Very proud of what you do. And they got another big tournament coming up. The World Baseball Classic Qualifying Tournament in Germany. And as Canada will put together that team. Greg Hamilton once again will be involved with that team. Ernie Witt is the manager. Larry Walker. The hitting coach. Danny Boucher, the pitching coach, and they'll go to Germany later on this month to try to qualify for the 2013 World Baseball Classic. Frank and Gutierrez. Makes one down in the dirt. It's 3-0. Ricky Romero did a good job of getting out of a tough situation in the second inning. Gave up a one a one out home run to Olivo. But then stranded a couple on base. He got the strikeout of Ryan. That was a big one. And then pop out. So what does he have to do now? Just focus on that glove and just start hitting that glove. Gutierrez found that ball off his leg and he's in some pain. You can see he's got that big shin guard on his leg and he is prone to do this. Pop that ball right down on his leg or ankle and he's taking some time to regroup. Well, just from his reaction, that didn't hit that bad on that front leg. Let's watch it right here. Cutter on the inside part. That looked like it got him on the back knee. I could hit him on the side of the Right knee. How? At that big shin guard, and sure enough, wouldn't you know it, <laughs> missed the shin guard and hit that unprotected knee. You know what that tells me? That Romero's cutter or his fastball has got a lot of movement on it. That is hard to do for a right handed batter like that to foul a ball off your back leg. Your pitch must have a lot on it, a lot of movement on it to be able to foul it like that. 3 2 pitch to Gutierrez. And he takes a walk. So, a man at first base, nobody out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Thank you, Jamie, and the Oilers. I don't know how they do it. They've lost Mark Akis. They've lost Jason Hamlin. They keep plugging away. Matt Wieters is hot. Driving in to run in the first inning, and Wilson Bedemy picked up the other RBI, so they erased that early deficit. Now they lead it 2-1. to one. Kyle Seeger, what's new? He already has a hit tonight. Now he's got two. I think JP's got to tell him what's coming. Hey, Kyle, we're going to tell you from now on. Maybe that'll work. That's his 13th hit against the Blue Jays. He's 13 for 25 this year. And, and his approach at the plate is a very simple approach. It, it, it's conducive from putting, for putting the bat on the baseball. In every at-bat against the Jays this year, the ones that, that I have seen, he has had a good at-bat. He has stayed right in there. He's kept that front shoulder in. He's got that bat flat and he's hit the ball hard. And this is a guy that came up last year, played in 53 games, had 182 at bats, and hit 258. He has taken over the third spot in the Mariner lineup. 24 years old. Jesus Montero. The DH tonight. He struck out. That ended the first inning. On the ground. Escobar goes to the bag for one. Back to first double play. That's the Ricky Romero we've been looking for. 
Got that ball on the ground and turn things over to his shortstop. Yeah, turn that ball over, make a good pitch, and you can get two outs with just one pitch. Escobar stays with that one. Wasn't real sure if it was going to hit a seam or that dirt area, so he stayed right with a little tricky hop at the end. But he completes the double play. Gutierrez at third now with two outs. Michael Sander is a notorious first pitch swinger. This year when he puts the first pitch of an at bat in play, he's at 491. 26 for 53. Time to start throwing breaking balls <laughs> on that first pitch, which Romero did. He is really coming into his own as a baseball player. Ball on the strength. Saunders, 25 years old, done a good job in the outfield. He was the everyday center fielder for most of the season, played 102 games in center. Late on that fastball. Played left field in last night's game and now right field here tonight. 14 home runs. It's a pretty good number right there considering the ballpark that they play in. Romero, a one two pitch. Just misses the inside corner. Mentioned Ricky Romero has not won since the 22nd of June. This is his 14th start since that last win. Tried that inside corner again. Paul Emmel said, you know what? It was inside last time and it was inside again. It's close. It's going around the plate. If he could hold on to it just for a split second more, that ball's going to be on the outside corner. Franklin Gutierrez led the inning off with a walk. He moved to third base on the double play by Montero. Saunders will take a breaking ball in the dirt, a two out walk. And that'll bring Miguel Oliva to the plate, who homered in his first at bat. Tenth homer of the season came with one out in the second inning. One nothing Seattle. There goes Saunders, cut on and missed, no throw as Aaron Sebia. Had the ball pop out of his glove. For Saunders, that's his 19th steal. He's only been caught twice. He goes on that first movement. Aaron Sebia feels like he's a little bit faster of throwing from his knees right there, but just didn't have the good grip. Looked like that was a straight steal by Saunders. Actually, Saunders is 19 for 22, and there's a line drive into center. Rasmus closing quickly and makes the catch. Well, Kobe Erasmus had a great jump on that sinking liner for a second consecutive inning. Ricky Romero leaves a pair of Mariners on base. The defense picking up Ricky Romero to end the top of the third.
strikeout because she was going to throw out the first pitch. Christine Sinclair, of course, is the captain of the Canadian national soccer team that won the bronze medal at the London Olympics. Christine's from Burnaby, B.C., and she grew up playing baseball as well. And she wears number 12 on the back of that jersey because of her favorite player, Robbie Alomar. And she and two of her teammates got a chance to throw out the first pitch here tonight. Uh, she was the flag bearer for the Canadian Olympic contingent in the closing ceremonies at London. So it's great to have Christine here, and congratulations on a phenomenal career. Smart, too. If you're going to pay, play catch with someone, you pick no more of a scale, <laughs> right? Maybe he'd be able to give you a few pointers. That's why she's the captain. Moises Sierra will start things off for the Jays. We mentioned the rookies tonight. Sierra, Ghost, and Etcher Varia, 7 8 9 in Blue Jays batting order. It's a pop up into shallow center field. Gutierrez calls for it, and Sierra's retired. That's seven straight set down by the veteran Kevin Millwood. You know, he is just throwing slow enough for the Blue Jays' timing to be messed up right now. That fastball is about 86, 87, 88 miles an hour. He's putting in a good spot right now. Blue Jays got to figure out and get a little bit better timing against Millwood. Kevin Millwood pitched the 2005 season for the Cleveland Indians. He led the American League that season in ERA at 286, and his manager was Eric Wedge. So when Wedge needed a veteran presence to help lead this young pitching staff, he thought Kevin Millwood was perfect for this young team. Anthony Ghost goes after the first pitch. Trayvon Robinson in fair territory. Two down. Let's check in again with Jamie Campbell. The Philadelphia Phillies are making a charge just like they did back in 2007. Jimmy Rollins drove in a couple of runs again today. In 2007, the Phillies were seven games out of first place with 17 to go. They got themselves into the postseason. Jimmy Rollins would eventually be the MVP. But here come the Phillies. Cliff Lee beat Josh Johnson 3 1 in that game today. And the Phillies now, since August 23rd, have gone 15 and 4. Starting hit. Uh, that's. We all know that they've got the great pitching staff and everybody's chipping in right now, but they're finally starting to hit. They got Ryan Howard back in the second half and Utley. You know a Charlie Manuel team is going to hit eventually. Or else he'll talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> and Danny Echeverria, Kyle Seeger in front of the shortstop. Another quick getting for... Kevin Millwood. This time it takes him just six pitches to dispatch the bottom of the order. We'll go to the fourth. Seattle up one nothing.
afternoon, and it's just a reminder that if you purchase your 2013 Blue Jays season tickets by December 7th, 2012, you will receive a $100 Blue Jays gift card, a Blue Jays Authentic Collection Premier Jacket, and a limited edition Jose Bautista bobblehead now. For more details, log on to BlueJays.com and inquire about season tickets for the 2013 season. Mike Karp takes the first pitch strike. Karp single to center back in the second inning. The Blue Jays will open up their 2013 season here at home against the Cleveland Indians. It'll actually start on the second day of the season, April 2nd. Cleveland and Boston will play on that first homestand, and then Blue Jays will go to Detroit for their first road trip, Detroit and Kansas City. So the schedule is out, and it includes the Houston Astros of the American League. How about that? Houston. Houston will be in Rogers Center in July. July 25th, 26th, and 27th. This is a four game series. 28, yeah. yeah. Four games right after the Dodgers are here. The Dodgers will be here during interleague play Monday, July 22nd, 3rd, and 4th. Colorado, the Rockies will also be here early in June, and the San Francisco Giants. So we get to see Colorado. That'll be Troy Tulowitzki. Hopefully he's back by by then. He's been hurt all year. The Giants will make the first stop in interleague play May 14th and 15th, a two-game interleague series. Clark fouls it off. It's a full count. And then Atlanta. How about this series? The Blue Jays play Atlanta two games here, 27th and 28th, and then fly to Atlanta, 29th and 30th. Two games before they head out to San Diego. Four-game series. The bad part about that, it's in two different cities. <laughs> Carp hits it on the ground. Echeverria waits on it and goes to first for the out. You know, the interesting thing about the schedule is because Houston is moving into the American League West, evening out the National League and American League, 15 teams each, there's interleague all throughout the season. And I think that's going to be very interesting come September. Interleague play will be all season long. And we mentioned the Astros. They'll make their inaugural appearance as an American League team July 25th through the 28th. Trayvon Robinson swings and misses at the first pitch. Robinson had a single to center his first time up. Hard to believe we're talking about next year's schedule. Boy, this season has flown by. And here in the second week of September. Ricky Romero has allowed one run on five hits. Brett Lorry quickly to first and what a play. I'll tell you what, Brett Laurie better be in the gold glove conversation because he has played as well as anybody in baseball at third base. When you watch him day in, day out, plays like this, I don't want to call him routine, but you come to expect him. When he was on the disabled list, and this isn't a knock on the other players, but when they filled in for Brett Laurie, they just couldn't make plays like this. And we would see balls off the bat and say, oh, that ball's going to be caught right there. And they'd go out into left field. Brett Laurie comes back. He's making those plays again. He's got tremendous range at third base. And in Carnation, boy, he has developed into a very sure-handed first baseman. Would you be comfortable with Incarnation every day at first next year? Certainly. When he came up with the Reds, he was playing some third base, and he just didn't look comfortable over there. It looked a little stiff, and he couldn't throw the ball across the infield. But I think with the success that he has had offensively, I think that has translated into a defensive player. And he looks very comfortable, looks very sure of himself. He doesn't have to make that throw across the field now. And uh, certainly, he could play first base every day. Ball in the strike to the number nine hitter, Brendan Ryan. 
I certainly don't want to make people believe that first base is easy. There's a lot of things going on over there. You have to be aware of bunt coverages. You have to hold runners on. You have to know when to range far to your right. And Edwin looks as comfortable as anybody. Three and one. I think that started last year for Edwin. Remember, he played spring training, all spring training at first base. And then right at the end, they said, okay, go play third. And I think that messed him up just a little bit. This I think it messed him up a lot. A lot. Okay. This year, you're our DH and you're going to play first base at times. And look at the year he's having. Brendan Ryan will take a two out walk. That'll turn the lineup over and go back to the top of the order. That's the third walk issued by Ricky Romero in this ball game. So Romero will work out of the stretch to Dustin Ackley. Ackley has gone over two so far. Ryan is a threat to steal at first base and a pretty good time to go. Two outs with the leadoff batter up. <laughs> Ryan has 10 steals in 15 attempts, checking with Jeff Datz across the way at third base, who's going through the signs. And then you saw Ryan look back at Mike Brumley, the first base coach. Nothing going on. Ackley drives it down the left side. That is a fair ball and bounces out of play. So Ackley goes the opposite field and that ball bouncing out of play saved the Blue Jays a run, at least for the moment. How about the two out walks? Well, you walk the number nine hitter. You're just asking for trouble. Yeah, especially with the way Ackley and Gutierrez have, have been hitting. Slicing the ball right down the left field line. You're right. The guy's hitting nine for a reason. He's hitting under 200. And then to walk him after getting the first two outs. Do you think pitchers get defensive when they see a guy hitting under 200 and say, I don't want to give up a hit to him? I hope not. I, I hope the, the mindset is one of confidence where he gets this guy out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just wonder if. Pitchers are saying, man, I better be careful of this guy. I don't want him to get a hit. He doesn't hit anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have that mindset, what's going to happen? He's going to hit you. <laughs> He's going to get you. So now Romero's in a gym. Mariners have already stranded five in this game. Gutierrez goes after the first pitch. Seattle was swept at the hands of Oakland at home before they came here to Toronto and during that series three game sweep they were two for 21 runners in scoring position. Gutierrez behind quickly 0 and 2. Hey Quedge knows that. His team has struggled offensively and they are in desperate need of big hits like tonight. They find themselves in a one run game but they've already stranded five and we're just in the fourth inning. They don't hit a ton of home runs so you've got to be able to hit with runners in scoring position. Just enough last night to get the win. Oh and two in the dirt and blocked nicely by Aaron Sevilla. JP had a perfect technique on that ball in the dirt. Just drop to your knees, cover up that hole between your legs, and take it some part of your body. Bend over also. You want to really get those shoulders over the ball so when it does hit your chest, it doesn't bounce too far. And CB asked for time. He wasn't quite set. Might not have been finished with the signal, so he wants to go through the signs again. Now they're set. Base hit to right field. Ryan is in. Sierra's got a strong arm. Here's the throw to the plate, and Aaron Sevier reached for Ackley. 
But because he left his feet, he couldn't stretch. If he stays on his feet and feels that ball, he can tag Ackley. But Gutierrez comes up with a big two-out, two-run single to right. That was the hit that Eric Wedge and the Mariners were looking for right there. Pretty good piece of hitting by Gutierrez. Breaking ball, he stays back and just punches the ball the other way. Sierra, like you said, a good arm, but it floats up the line on him. And you're right, J.P. and C.B. had to go out and get the ball, leaves his feet, and then just reaches, and that gives the base runner a chance to go in behind him to score the third run. 3 nothing, Seattle. Gutierrez drives in two, and here's Kyle Sager, and it all goes back to that two-out walk to the number nine batter, Brendan Ryan. You just encourage the offense when you turn the lineup over and then you get to their big hitters. Bouncing ball towards second. Echeverria has it. The inning is over. But the two-out walk by Romero leads to two runs for Seattle. It's 3 nothing, Mariners. Take home a sharp home theater system, including audio soundbar, Blu ray player, and of course LCD TV. To enter, visit Hit a Home Run with Sharp.ca. Sharp, big is too small a word for it. Well, Seattle has taken a 3 0 lead, and Kevin Millwood has retired all nine Blue Jays batters he's faced. You were talking about Kevin Millwood and, and pitching for Eric Wedge when he was with the Cleveland Indians and a veteran over here to help some of these young guys. Don't you think a guy like this would look great in a Blue Jay uniform? Of course. I mean, he's been around the game forever. This is his 16th season. And he's a true professional. He was an 11th round pick in 93 by the Braves. Nobody really thought he was going to be a premier pitcher in. You know, you could argue whether or not he is. He's got 168 wins and 152 losses. His best season, 18 wins and 99. He was an all-star, finished third in the Cy Young voting. But he's been a terrific big league pitcher for 16 years. So he must be doing something right. And there must be some secret that he can pass along to young players. It's no secret. Throw it over and give yourself a chance. <laughs> and Millwood, like I say, he grew up in the Brave system where it was all about pitching. Played for Bobby Cox. Felix Hernandez, although he's won a Cy Young already, he's a young guy. And he too can learn from Kevin Millwood. Hernandez will go to the mound tomorrow. Felix 
Alex Hernandez is the king of the hill for Seattle. His eighth major league season. He's 98 and 74 with a very good ERA. He'll start Thursday against Henderson Alvarez. And Hernandez is just 26 years old. He turned 26 on April 8th. And Laurie chases a high fastball and strikes out. It's hard to believe. Eighth season, just 26 years old. Seems like he's been around forever. Well, he has been, and he is really a special pitcher in that he never really throws the same pitch twice. He won the Cy Young in 2010 when he beat out David Price and C.C. Sabathia. And he's just a phenomenal pitcher that really understands how to pitch. And oh, by the way, he threw a perfect game earlier this season. How about the Mariners being involved in two perfect games this year? Philip Umber, the White Sox, threw one against them, and then Felix Hernandez pitched his perfect game. Both of those coming at Safeco Field, a great pitcher's ballpark. Kobe Rasmus with a 2 0 count. I don't think I've ever been involved in a perfect game anywhere, ever. Oh, I have. Yeah, you have. <laughs> On the wrong end of one. Three and oh. Kevin Barker threw a perfect game against the Blue Jays in 82. Lenny Barker, 81. 81, 81, yeah, Lenny Barker. May, May 15th, 1981. Yeah, I arrived just in time to participate in that game. <laughs> Did you help him out that day? <laughs> Here's the 3 0. There's the first base runner for the Blue Jays. It comes with one out in the fourth. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. He's got an update. Aaron Cook getting beat up there. David Phelps has yet to allow a hit. To the Red Sox. Boston won last night. Jacoby Ellsbury with a walk off hit, his fourth hit of the game on his 29th birthday. So Rasmus, the first base runner for the Blue Jays, Edwin Encarnacion takes a first pitch strike. Kevin Millwood, four pitch walk to Kobe Rasmus. First time that he showed any signs of not being able to find the strike zone. I think he was trying to throw the ball up there, Rasmus. Trying to get Kobe to go after it and pop it up. He flew out his last time up. This has popped up over near the seats. Harp runs out of room. It's well back out of play. I think every pitch that he has thrown tonight has had a purpose. Yeah, and why do I say he threw those four high ones to Rasmus? Because the next pitch then to Encarnacion was down and away. So he can do, it, do that if he wants to. You see, he's checking with the umpire to make sure what the count is. You look at the scoreboard and then check with the umpire. Scoreboard says one and two. Millwood thought it was two and two, right? It looked like he was asking the umpire what the count was, and he held up two fingers and then flashed two more. I believe it's one and two to Encarnacion. High deep drive, and Edwin has just left the building. Number 39 for Encarnacion, and we got a brand new ball game. There are stats everywhere for baseball players, and one of the stats I love with Encarnacion, he's hitting about 350 when he has two strikes on him. One and two count, they try to slip a fastball by him, and he's been doing this all season long. They're good at that with two strikes. 
hammers that one to left field to get the Blue Jays two big runs, and they are right back in it. The first hit of the game for the Blue Jays is a two-run home run, number 39 for Double E. He now has 99 RBIs. And that was a no-doubter. Yeah. Had big-time sound. One behind Josh Hamilton. Yunel Escobar with a big cut. Ball in the strike. Some of these Blue Jay batters are putting on a show this afternoon in batting practice. One of them being Omar Vizquel. He was cranking balls out here, but Sierra and Encarnacion, they are putting on a show. Two hopper to third. Kyle Seager across the diamond, and Escobar's retired. Two down. Just Edwin. Fun. That's his fourth home run of the season against the Mariners. And he's hit four homers and now has driven in nine. That, of course, leads the Blue Jays against Seattle. It's fun to watch the big boys hit. And they can get you back into a game with one swing. Well, he has six hits all season long against Seattle. Four of them have left the yard. Adam Lynn. Been away. Two and zero. Oh. Well, Millwood was breezing. He retired the first ten he faced, and then walked Colby Erasmus on four pitches. Got ahead of Incarnacion, but Edwin crushed that ball to left. Big swing from Lind, and he swings right through it. Looked like. A Lynn was sitting on that breaking ball right there and had a good swing at it. Looked like he was trying to tie it up with one swing. Breaking ball passed Ackley into right. He got the breaking ball and stayed up out of the plate and he hooked it into right field. Well, Justin Ackley plays a deep. Second base with Adam Lind at the plate. Breaking ball hangs over there, and there it is again, about eye level. Look where Ackley is. Takes a good route. He gives ground on that, but just still can't come up with it. And picks up the second hit of the inning by the Blue Jays. Ackley's played very well at second base. This is his 126th start at second. Manager John Farrell with some encouraging words to Moises Sierra as he moves on deck. Miguel Olivo goes out to chat with Kevin Millwood. It has been such a breeze for Millwood. He's had an eight pitch inning, a six pitch inning, and now he's run into a little problem here in the fourth. And the problem is named Double E. 38, 39 home run. He is one behind Josh Hamilton for the American League lead. Two and up. Oh. Eric Wedge has been desperate for runs. They get three runs and then see it evaporate to a one run lead on one swing of the bat. Seattle doesn't have that kind of thump. They've got great pitching. They've got a great bullpen. Three run lead disappeared pretty quickly. Three balls and a strike.
Second time through the lineup now. This is where Millwood starts to throw more off speed pitches. JP fouls it straight back. Kevin Millwood has never really enjoyed a lot of success here at Rogers Center. His career record is one and six with an ERA closing in on five with about one and a half, and he is now allowed eight home runs. And for his career, just a two and eight record against the Blue Jays. Full count, two outs. There goes Lynn. Cut on and missed there, and Sebius strikes out. The inning comes to an end. Edwin Encarnacion, his 39th home run, is a deep drive to left, makes it a one run game. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Jose Cruz Jr. in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. run in the fourth inning. One lucky fan will bring the game home with their new Sharp home theater system. To see if you have one, visit hit a home run with Sharp.ca. Sharp. Big is too small a word for it. And that was a big home run. Number 39 for double E. He's just one behind Josh Hamilton for the home run lead in the American League. There's the difference between the starters through four innings. Romero walking a few more than Millwood. Millwood pounding the strike zone a little bit more. Kevin Millwood threw 26 pitches through his first three innings and then 27 pitches in the fourth. So that's why Mon Miguel Oliva went out there to give his veteran pitcher a little bit of a breather. That was a long inning for Kevin Millwood. Ricky Romero is back. Romero gave up two runs after two were out in the last inning. Franklin Gutierrez with a two run single to right. And just like that, he's falling behind three and nothing. He walked a batter in the third inning, walked two batters in the third inning, a big one last inning, and now falls behind. Montero here. A four pitch walk to start the fifth. Michael Sanders will step to the box. He walked his last time up. He's over one officially. And when you look at Sanders, he came from Victoria, British Columbia. One of the BC boys, Brett Glory from Langley, Ryan Dempster from Gibson's, Justin Morneau from New Westminster. And they are well represented at the Boys from BC. Brett Lorry, younger than Michael Saunders, never really played against one another prior to the big leagues. But they played together, Team Canada, WBC. Hopefully they'll be united again next March when the WBC takes place. Canada needs to qualify, and that's why they're playing in a tournament in 
Germany later on this month. Brett Flory was a very young player last time, 2009, and I'm sure he'll have a big role in Team Canada this year. Later this month, they're qualifying. How can they do that with some of their big leaguers? They, the big leaguers don't get to go. There's Morneau, of course, mm -hmm. and Saunders and Lori. They're not able to play in this tournament, so they have to make do with minor league players, some amateur players. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they'll be able to qualify in that tournament in Germany, and then the big leaguers can participate okay. next March. All right. Steve Delabar, the former Mariner, starts to loosen up. We're in the fifth inning. It's a one-run game. Bruce Walton with a quick visit to the mound. Lead off walk. Now Michael Saunders. We mentioned Saunders, a very good first pitch swinger, and after the walk, you can bet you he's geared up. You know, that's the last thing John Farrell wanted to see after the Edwin Encarnacion home run. Get to with him one run to come out and throw seven straight out of the strike zone. And you know what? He might have that quick hook tonight. He wants to win this ball game. So Ricky needs to start throwing more strikes. Manners have had 11 base runners. Already in this ball game, they've stranded six, so they've had plenty of opportunities to score even more. Ground ball through the right side into right field. Montero will stop at second. As Saunders has his first hit of the night. That's the eighth hit for Seattle. He had 14 in the game last night. Base runners all night long. As Saunders gets one just out of the reach again of Adani Echeverria making a second start at second base and then right back in business. And John Farrell pops out of the dugout. And Ricky Romero saw him come out of the dugout. Steve Delabar is warming up in the bullpen. And Seattle with eight hits so far. Ricky Romero will hand the ball over to John Farrell and he's not too happy about leaving this ball game but the leadoff walk certainly solidified Farrell's position in this game and now he'll call upon Steve Delabar to come in with two on and nobody out in the fifth and is up three to two. He allowed the first two batters to reach here in the fifth after the Blue Jays closed it to a one-run game. He walked Montero. That's the fourth walk he's allowed. And then Michael Saunders got a base hit. John Farrell made the pitching change. Steve Delamar was acquired on July 30th in a trade with the Seattle Mariners. Eric Thames went the other way, and he is now with the Mariners. And Delabar, boy, what a great addition he has been to this Blue Jays bullpen. Yeah, he certainly has. He's that strikeout guy that they can bring in when they need a big strikeout with a couple of runners on. I don't care what inning it is. Tonight it's the fifth inning. They need to get out of this. After that home run by Dan Carnacion got him back, they need to get out of this inning without any more damage. So they'll bring in Delabar to face Olivo. Hellebar last worked on the ninth at Boston, an inning in a strikeout. Fastball. 
And a devastating split finger fastball. Talibar retired all three batters he faced in the seventh inning at Fenway. And he struck out Pedro Siriaco to end that inning of work. Miguel Olivo shows bunt, takes the ball. The Mariners have the lowest batting average in the American League. 233 coming into action tonight. They've also scored the fewest runs, so Eric Wedge wants to add to this one run lead. Yeah, he sees how many base runners he's left on base tonight. So he's going to change it up right there and let Olivo swing. Seattle has scored three runs here. They now have scored 542 runs for the season. This is their 143rd game. Showing bunt and jabs at it. And a half hearted attempt by Olivo. The Texas Rangers. They lead the American League in runs scored. They've scored 720 runs. And the unfortunate thing for Seattle is they're in the same division. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> the bad news. But they have improved offensively. One this and year. two blocked by Aaron Sebia. You know, they really had a rough year last year. And they went out to try to make some changes, traded some of that pitching that they've had to upgrade their offense. And at this point, after 142 games, they're 56 runs better than they were last year. So it has improved. They have also hit 34 more home runs they did this year than they did last year. Amiibo strikes out. Delamar hits the first out of the inning. That strikeout has been a great weapon for him. Yeah, that's why you bring him in in a, in a tough situation. After the first two batters get on, you need strikeouts where the ball's not put in play. That's one thing we have seen with Delabar. He will throw that splitter to right-handed hitters, and it's been a very good pitch for him. I think in the past he would lean on his slider, and his slider's not a real good breaking ball. But boy, since he started throwing that splitter to righties, he's been much more effective. Probably his third best pitch. And if you're in a tough situation, why would you want to get beat with your third best pitch? There's a splitter outside to Mike Carp. Ice cream bars. They're on a stick. Trying to overpower that fastball and threw it right in the dirt. Blue Jays looking for a double play. They've already turned one tonight. Jesus Montero grounded into a double play in the third. That is a good splitter. Hard and Late breaking and the fact that he throws 95 96 will get hitters to start their swing early. How about the confidence to throw it in a fastball count 2 and 0 oh with a couple of runners on base. Confidence that you can throw it and you'll get a swing out of it. Just missed with that pitch. It's 3 and 1. Delabar inherited two base runners. He's trying to save these runs for Ricky Romero and the Blue Jays. Seattle leads it 3 2. Way inside. That'll load the bases. So the bases are loaded now. And Trayvon Robinson. We'll step in. Robinson was robbed of a base hit his last time up. He will bat left handed for the first time tonight. He's a switch hitter. He had a single and grounded out as a right handed bat.
Good fastball as Delamar jumps ahead. Trayvon Robinson started out in the Red Sox system. He was traded to Seattle for Eric Bedard, who went to the Red Sox. Nice play by Aaron Sevier right there to save a run. That looks like a pretty wise trade by the Seattle Mariners if they could trade Bedard to Boston and get a young player like this with this type of upside. Of course, Harry Bedard was recently released by the Pittsburgh Pirates. And they didn't stay in Boston very long either. Ball on the strike. <laughs> nice. That's a splitter. Just enough movement to bring him back over that inside corner. A little bit less than his fastball. That timing a little bit off. Makes it tough on the hitter. Delamars bounced a few more balls in the dirt this outing than we have seen in the past and you can bet there's a little bit of adrenaline flowing yeah. as he's pitching against his former team. Yeah he, he wants his punch outs. You see him in batting practice and he sees his old teammates and they talk and they laugh and they have a good time but don't you know he wants to get out there and show them that they made a mistake trading them. There you see. The base runners Montero at third. He walked to start the inning. Michael Saunders had a base hit, and then Carp with the walk. Still just one out. Robinson fouls it out of play. And he's called out on strikes. That split finger fastball caught the outside corner. That's a pair of strikeouts now for Steve Delabar. He had a pitch to hit and he fouled it off the fastball the previous pitch. There was your one shot as he dropped that splitter on the outside corner. Big second out for the Blue Jays. And here's that number nine hitter, Brendan Ryan. He had the two out walk in the fourth that led to two Mariners runs. You got to go after him. Yep. And he knows it too. And he will be looking first pitch fastball. And he gets a first pitch splitter and hits it off his foot. But you're right. Then that's what you got to do. You're batting down in the order. You got a chance to drive in a couple of runs at least. And you think aggressively. That went right off his heel. As he fouls that splitter off. I think that's the only way you can approach it when you're hitting like that down in the order. You know that guy's going to come after you so just be ready to swing it. Have a positive at bat. One and one. The fastball, you could see Ryan was late. Now, Delabar has got the upper hand for sure. You can go fastball down and away and try to catch that outside corner. You don't have to throw another splitter and take a chance of bouncing a ball. Yeah. Uh, not right now. I mean, you could try and pick that outside corner like you were saying, there, then come back with the splitter. There's so many different ways. You've got to get into the head of that hitter right now. What is he thinking about? Ball down and away, struck him out. 
What a job by Steve Delamar. He comes into the ball game with two on and nobody out and strikes out the side. The Mariners strand two or it's still a one-run game. The leadoff batter and gave up a single to Michael Saunders and his night came to an end. Overall, he allows eight hits, three earned runs. He walked four and struck out three. Well, boy, oh boy, what a job Steve Delamar did by bailing out Ricky Romero. Delamar stranded the bases loaded. He walked the final man to load the bases, Mike Carp, but then he struck out Trayvon Robinson and Brendan Ryan to strand three. More walks than strikeouts again for Romero. 87 pitches. For four innings, and Delabar came in and did what you were looking for a little bit of power out of that back end of the bullpen to keep it a one run game. 3 2 ball game. Blue Jays with just two hits. One of those left the ballpark. Edwin Encarnacion's 39th home run of the season. Here's Walton talking to Ricky Romero, and there's another strike. It's 0 and 2. Down and away. Moises Sierra flied to center field his first time up back in the third inning. Everybody was talking about the home run that Sierra hit in Fenway Park. He bombed the left center field. He's got some power. I think when he learns how to use it, he, he can be a force at the plate. Ground ball right side. Actually over and throws out Sierra. One down. Want a better tasting burger? Then step up to the plate for a sirloin uncle burger at a and w. Made with five ounces of juicy sirloin, it's a taste of burger bliss. Beautiful night in Toronto. And it's a beautiful fall evening. Ricky Romero out of the ball game after four plus two batters and his team trails by a run. 3-2 Seattle. Anthony goes shows but and takes a strike. Down and in ball on the strike. Mentioned Kevin Millwood in his 16th season in the big leagues. He played with the Braves from 97 to 2002. Then he spent two years in Philadelphia, one year in Cleveland. Went to the Rangers for four seasons. 
He's just one of those guys, as you mentioned, Pat, that if you have an opening in your rotation and you've got some young pitchers, he's a good guy to have around. Mm -hmm. He spent a year with the Orioles in 2010, and last year he was in Colorado. He's a great character guy. Loves to work, loves to be around the ballpark. Didn't really work out in Baltimore. He's a fly ball pitcher. That ballpark in the Colorado ballpark really didn't work out for him, but in Safeco, good spot for him. There's that swing back fastball that catches the inside corner. Two outs now. Well, he just knows how to pitch. He sees that ghost is set up for an inside fastball, and he's going to bring it back. All of one of his ex teammates, Greg Maddox, who made a history of that comeback fastball against the lefties. He pounds the inside corner for another strikeout. I think Maddox is the first guy that really brought awareness of that pitch to the big leagues. He's the first one I remember. Yeah. He threw that pitch off the plate inside the lefties and would freeze them. And Danny Echeverria, the second baseman tonight, grounded out the third base, his only time up. I tell you what, it's difficult to be around that pitching staff in Atlanta and not pick up something. <laughs> you know what? If you didn't, you were probably gone yourself because you weren't improving and making your game better. Chavaria quickly in a hole, 0 2. Every pitch has a purpose. He has gone upstairs a couple of times against Echevarria thinking that he can't get around on a high fastball. Coming upstairs again. He won't fish for it. Lays off that high fastball. That's a Maria batting 234. He's got a homer and eight RBIs. Slow breaking ball popped up. Ryan, the shortstop, out into the outfield and makes the catch. The Blue Jays go down in order once again. We've played five innings here at Rogers Center. Mariners lead. Junior Jays Saturday are presented by Boston Pizza. Saturday, September 15th. Blue Jays welcome in the Red Sox. The game starts at 1.07 p.m. The special kids prize tickets in the 200 and 500 level outfield seats. After the game, kids 14 and under can run the bases just like the pros. For tickets, call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com to order your Blue Jays tickets for Junior Jays Saturday. Or you can always stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Junior Jays Saturday, always a very popular event with the kids and a good turnout. And they bring a great atmosphere here to Rogers Center. 
Hasanakli goes after the first pitch, and it's a foot race, and Encarnacion beats him to the bag. One down. Play made a little bit closer because Edwin had to wait back on that ball. See it bounce off the dirt. There's plenty of speed to get Ackley at first. Franklin Gutierrez has been the difference in this ball game. His two out, two run single in the fourth gave the Mariners a three nothing lead. Blue Jays would score two on Encarnacion's two run home run. Ball on the strike. Steve Delamar came into the ball game with nobody out and runners at first and second. He would strike out Olivo first out of the inning. Then after a Mike Carp walk to load the bases, he struck out Trayvon Robinson and Brendan Ryan to strand the bases loaded. You know, I think this is September baseball, and I, I think a manager could have a quicker hook because he's got more guys down in that bullpen. I think if this game was played in June like that, I think he would have stuck with Ricky Romero. But because you've got 12 relievers that you can go to, you can start playing matchup baseball in the fifth inning if you want to. Well, and the Blue Jays certainly have a lot of options down in that pen, as do the Mariners. Eric Wedge last night in the eighth inning used four different pitchers to face four batters and got out of the inning. Yep. Gutierrez goes after that high pitch. You know, and with so many guys, you can use your seventh or eighth inning guy early in the game if you need to. Look at all the relievers that are on both sides. Yeah, the Mariners have a full complement of pitchers as well. Drag three call. Boy, right, Steve Delabar is beating. That's his fourth strikeout since entering the ball game. Very simple approach. Good fastball placement to go along with a very devastating split finger. He'll mix in a slider every now and then. He, he has that, but it, again, it's his third best pitch. And he's got a good arm. The slider caused him a lot of problems, especially to right-handed batters. He gave up a lot of home runs to right-handed hitters because of that hanging slider. So he's put that on the back burner for the time being. When the Blue Jays traded for him. He had given up nine home runs, all of them to righties, which is odd, given his power. Mm -hmm. But the fact that that slider would spin up there, not really break a lot, led to those nine home runs. Kyle Seeger was two for three again tonight. Fastball. 95 mile an hour fastball tied up Sigurd. Splitter in the dirt bounces off the catcher Aaron CD. Yeah, that was why it was a, such a good idea to go back in last inning when they had the bases loaded and two outs. So just go ahead and pound that fastball in on Brendan Ryan. For that reason right there, that pitch we just saw get away from Aaron Sebia. Two balls, two strikes, two down. On the ground, and Conishen will go to the bag. Another good inning for Steve Delamar. 
Sets down the Mariners in order with a strikeout. The Blue Jays trailing by a run. We'll start off with the leadoff man, Brett Lurie, followed by Colby Raspis and Edwin Encarnacion. A two. in a TD Comfort Zone, our guest of TD, the TD Comfort Zone, courtesy of TD. Good pitcher for the Mariners is the right-hander Sean Kelly, making his 39th appearance of the season, and this is a very talented, very effective bullpen. Here's another one right here. Heavy sinking fastball, that's what you'll get from Kelly. His slider is a strikeout pitch, a changeup. He keeps the ball low, rarely gives up a home run. It's that power sinker. That is the big pitch for him. Kelly was recalled from Triple H Tacoma on the 4th of September. He had been sent back to the minor leagues in the middle of August. For the season, as we mentioned, is 39 games, and now he falls behind the first batter he faces, 2-0. Was originally drafted and signed by the Mariners in 2006. He spent his whole career with Seattle. He is now 28 years old. And that's the last thing Eric Wood wanted to see. A four pitch walk to start the six. Kevin Milwood goes five innings. He allows just two hits. One of those two was a two run home run to Encarnas Young. Jays didn't have a base runner until the bottom of the fourth inning he had retired the first 10 batters he faced he walked Colby Rasmus and that set up the two run home run by Edwin in front of 66 pitches for Millwood also through five innings but enough for Eric Wedge he'll go to his very deep bullpen Rasmus goes after the first pitch and it's a pop into foul territory so after the four pitch walk, Rasmus goes after the first pitch and pops up in the foul ground. You know, the only thing I can think of, maybe Kevin Millwood is not feeling too well tonight, but he looked awfully sharp. Just 66 pitches, two runs in five innings. That they take him out of the ball game, so maybe he's feeling a little bit under the weather. Well, he's at 37 years old. <laughs> That's not old. <laughs> Not for you and I, but no. for baseball players, it's getting up there. Millwood last pitched on the 31st of August. He was pitching on an extra day's rest. Last time out, he threw 117 pitches in five innings. Down and away to Encarnacion. Edwin is one for two.
Sharply hit, backhanded by Seager. He bobbled it, and in time at second, and what a double play. Seager backhanded it and then had a momentary bobble, but still gets enough on the throw to get Rory at second, and then Ackley with a terrific turn. Watch this double play. Hot shot backhanded. There's the hesitation, but still has the arm strength to get it to Ackley, who converts the double play. season kicks off tomorrow with the Chicago Bears and the Green Bay Packers with the Packers trying to avoid an 0-2 start the NFL on Sportsnet all season long. New pitcher for the Red Jays will be the right-handed Brandon Lyon and what a job by Steve Delabar. Delabar goes two innings and strikes out four. And it came in the ball game with runners at first and second and stranded the bases load. How about that and four punch outs and walk. He'll give way now to Brandon Lyon, another player that the Blue Jays picked up in a trade with the Houston Astros, and he's probably pitching his finest baseball. He used to be a cutter curveball type of pitcher, but he's added a very good sinking fastball. He's worked with Bruce Walton this year to change that grip and change the hand position. When he lets it go and he says it's really opened up the inside part of the plate to the right handers. First pitch strike to the DH Jesus Montero. He too has always been lying a strike thrower. He can close his eyes and throw strikes all night long. Mr. That pitch down and away. Reaches for that breaking ball and Lyon snares it and Montero's up. Out on the comebacker. Very smart and out on that mound. He really has an idea what he wants to do. Think about it when you can throw that sinker down and away to those left handers and then you can cut that fastball in the inner half. You got that hitter guessing all the time. Michael Saunders he is one for two with the wall. The cutter missed inside. Brandon wow. Lyon started with the Blue Jays in 2000. We played in the New York Penn League at Queens. And that season he made 13 starts pitched 60 in the third innings walked six batters <laughs> he walked six and struck out 55 he has always been known as a strike thrower when he was a starter when he was a closer when he was a setup man it doesn't matter 
2001 he started out in double A so he skipped the Florida State League went from rookie ball to double A. He went five and zero oh in Knoxville and then five and three in Syracuse and Mark Connor knocked on my door says I want to see Brandon London. So Saunders takes a walk with one out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Well, Michael Saunders has been on base three times tonight. A base hit and two walks. So to finish up that story about Brandon Lyon, he was 10 and 3 between Double A Knoxville and Syracuse, and we called him to the big leagues. But first of all, we sent a cameraman down to Syracuse. We'd never seen Brandon Lyon before, and Mark Connor, my pitching coach, wanted to see Lyon, and we got video of Lyon pitching in game at Syracuse, and he loved his sinking fastball and the ability to throw strikes. This has popped up on the infield behind the mound. You know, Escobar calls for it. Everybody had vacated second base except Brandon Lyon. That's the second out of the inning. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Uh, thank you Jamie and it's going to get very interesting the St. Louis Cardinals lost this afternoon in San Diego the Padres swept the Cardinals three straight the Phillies won as we mentioned and now Philadelphia is three games back in the wild card go figures San Diego sweeping the Cardinals how about that Cardinals have Wainwright on the mound too didn't they their ace Snap throw to first. Tag is not in time as Saunders gets back. Yeah, that was an interesting series. The Cardinals just couldn't come up with anything against that San Diego pitching staff, and Cards lose three to two. But that whole race is a mess. St. Louis is ten and a half behind Cincinnati. They're not going to be no. a factor as far as winning the division. Kyle Loesch started that game. He lost his third game of the season. He's 14 and 3 now. Yeah, I take that back. Wainwright lost yesterday's game for the Cardinals. Loesch lost today. But they still have a shot, eh? Yes, they do. They're still involved. The Cardinals will go to. Los Angeles for a four game series. That's not going to be a walk in the park. I mean, Los Angeles just a game behind them. Starting today in the wild card. Saunders can steal. And a stolen base back in the third is 19th of the season. To right, bobbled by Lori quickly recovers and throws out cut. Brett Lori playing that rover position in shallow right, knocked it down, got out of there, and ends the inning. Mariners strand another base runner. Bottom of the seventh. They have a 3 2 lead.
contest on Facebook today. There are five ways to win this year, including a grand prize draw for Canada's largest LCD TV, a 90-inch Sharp Aquos. Join Sharp Canada on Facebook today. The Blue Jays are down by a run. It'll be Escobar, Lind, and Aaron Sebia here in the seventh. Escobar goes after the first pitch and fouls it up the third baseline. Tell you what, we mentioned that Seattle has terrific defense. They've committed just 57 errors this season. And the double play that ended the bottom of the sixth was a great example of that of that defense. Edwin Encarnacion hit one to third. Seeger started the double play actually with a great pivot at second. Pretty good positioning, I thought, by the third baseman to stay on that line. Ball was hit hard by Encarnacion, but he backhanded it, bobbled it for a minute, threw to second, and a lot of times you'll see second baseman just get the force out. But Ackley came across that bag and completed a bang bang double play at first base. Well, the impressive part of it, Seeger never panicked. Even though he bobbled it, he took his time, made a good throw, and Ackley came across the bag and made a strong throw to first. Shorter distance as a second baseman when you're making taking a long throw from that third baseman. You get it in your hands quicker so you can turn a double play. This textbook. I think it surprised Edwin Encarnacion that they tried a double play. They tried to finish off that play. Escobar strikes out. That's the first out of the bottom of the center. And Kelly's got that heavy sinking fastball, but he's also got a slider. And that's his strikeout pitch, and that's what he uses right there for Escobar. Eric Wedge is out of the dugout, and his middle relief has gotten him with to one out in the seventh. Sean Kelly hands the ball over to Eric Wedge, the left-hander, Oliver Perez, the veteran, now working out of the bullpen on to face Adam Lynn. That's live coverage of the Blue Jays. Watch the action live all season from your smartphone. Download the Rogers Live app from their app store. Hello, hit Al Burton. And it looks like it might be a father-son trip to Rogers Center, sitting in the front row. The veteran Oliver Perez now working out of the bullpen, the former starter. He's done a pretty good job for Eric Wedge. Yeah, he has reinvented himself as a reliever. Went to winter ball to pitch out of the bullpen. Has worked out. Righties hitting just 190. Lefties over 300 against Press. Still has that good breaking ball. Jumps ahead of the pinch hitter Rajay Davis. Davis into the ball game. Pinch hitting for Adam Lind. Lind went one for two with the single. Davis drives this ball to right. Michael Saunders 
It's the catch, two down. But this is the one thing we saw Eric Wedge use last night is bullpen. We mentioned he used four different pitchers in the eighth inning. And here he comes again. This is the problem <laughs> I have with September baseball. And you can't blame Eric Wedge. No. The rules stipulate that you can call up 40 players. But if you were in a pennant race and you were facing one pitcher at a time, maybe somebody you've never seen before, it would be a very challenging time. Josh Kenny, the right-hander, will come into the ball game to face J.P. Aaron Sebia with two down. Last night's game, Edwin Encarnacion and got him to pop up to center field. He's working in his 26th game of the season. He was one of four pitchers for four batters for Eric Wedge's team last night in the eighth inning. And felt like he needed all four of those pitchers to get through the eighth inning, then turn it over to the closer, Wilhelmson, in the ninth inning. But Kenny's got a late breaking slider. That he can use and he's also got another breaking pitch that's got a little bit more of a break on He's fearless and he's tough on the right hander as he keeps the ball down lots of strikeouts and lots of ground balls when he is on JP and CB the catcher has gone over two with a strikeout. He has never faced Josh Kinney There are two outs bottom of the seventh inning a 3-2 Mariner lead First pitch slider for a strike. One and one. Not afraid to use that slider against the right handers. Probably going to keep the ball away from Aaron Sebia. Ooh. Wicked sinker. <laughs> they actually wanted that ball outside, away. Look where the catcher is set up on the outside part of the plate, and it came all the way back to the inside. And there's that slider foul tip held on to by Miguel Olivo. So this time, three relievers are used in the seventh to get out of the seventh inning. The veteran, Darren Oliver, comes on as we go to the eighth.
Kobe Osbury drove in the winning run. The Red Sox will be here Friday night. It all starts at 7.07 p.m. and then a couple of afternoon games, Saturday and Sunday. Call the Blue Jays for your Red Sox tickets at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com and order your tickets for the weekend series. Last time the Red Sox were at Rogers Center in the 2012 season. The season is winding down today before the batting practice started. Blue Jays took a team picture. It'll be interesting to remember this picture and see how many of these guys are back next year. How many new faces and how many holdovers and how many youngsters will make the opening day roster? It's always a mystery, isn't it, when you get into the offseason? Who's going to be where? Here's the first question. Darren Oliver, 41 years old, and this could be his last season, and it's been a good one for him. Three and two of the 165 earned run average for Oliver. Last work in that Boston series on the seventh, two-thirds of an inning, just gave up a scratch hit in that game. Trayvon Robinson going back to the right side of the plate. He singled and grounded out against Ricky Romero and then struck out against Steve Delabar as a left-handed batter. Now he turns around to face Darren Oliver. Pops this one up into shallow right. Sierra calls for it and Robinson is retired. Darren Oliver has had some terrific season. Blue Jays hold an option on Oliver for next year, and it's not really clear whether or not he intends to come back. But when you look at the season he has put together, this is his 54th appearance. He's worked a total of 49 innings. The league has hit 194 against Oliver. Has a couple of saves and four opportunities, and he's been terrific. You know, you mentioned the 53 games that he has pitched in. He has given up a run in just seven of them. I mean, and that's how dominant he has been. And he really hasn't been a a left-on-left -left specialist where he'll face a couple of lefties or one lefty and they get him out of there. He has been good for at least an inning every time he has gone out there. And who can forget that day in Texas when he went multiple innings down in Texas when it was scorching hot and extra inning game and he's telling John Farrell I'm not coming out of this game. Well that's the kind of character you want on your ball club when you go to the manager and say you know what I know it's hot and I know I'm old but I'm pitching. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan Ryan that's a foul ball just foul down the left field line. Gary Darling had a good look at that as it hooked into foul territory. Just down the left field line. Hooking. Just foul. That game I'm talking about. Two and a third innings for Oliver against the Texas Rangers in Texas. He gave up two hits. Gave the Blue Jays a chance to win it. They'd lose it in 13. Yeah, that was a terrific ball game. Back and forth. Henderson Alvarez started against Colby Lewis. And Jason Frazier would be stuck with the loss. The Blue Jays scored two in the 13th. The Rangers stormed back with three in the bottom half of that inning. Josh Hamilton had a walk off, didn't he? I believe he did. Look out. Brendan Ryan strikes out. That goes all the way past the third base coach. Jeff Betts. That's the second out of the inning. Speed pitch. That, that helicopter's over Datsy, the third base coach. And then Ryan has struck out three times tonight. And they walked with two outs in the fourth, and that sparked a two run inning. Top of the order, Dustin Ackley. He doubled after the walk to Ryan, and this time he pulls it foul. Ackley's double came in the fourth inning with two outs, and that set up the Franklin Gutierrez two-run single, which is the difference in this ball game. After that two-out walk, Ackley sliced one down the left field line. You can handle left-handers. Oliver has.
has a terrific knack for backing off that breaking ball and getting hitters out in front. He just has an excellent feel for pitching. He's been doing it for a long time. He'll cut the ball in, out, up, down. He'll drop a slow curveball on you. Just makes you feel uncomfortable. When you should be comfortable. I mean, he throws 87, 88 miles an hour. He's yep. not overpowering, but you're right. The ability to change speeds and keep a hitter off balance is something Oliver has learned over the years. And Ackley will take the walk. It comes with two outs. Walks have really factored in tonight for the Mariners, but they haven't really capitalized on all of the walks. It's the seventh walk they've been handed here tonight, but they've uh, only scored three runs. They've stranded 10 base runs. Just really haven't been able to bust the game wide open. And Steve Delamar is responsible for that. He struck out the side in the fifth inning and left the bases loaded. First pitch strike to Gutierrez. How about that through the first five innings? Blue Jay pitching stranded nine base runners. And that's why it's just a one run game. Blue Jays only have two hits. And they only trail by one. Again tonight, the Mariners having problems hitting with runners in scoring position. They're just one for eight. Gutierrez with the only hit with a runner in scoring position. He drove home two. Pretty good piece of hitting. He was punching a curveball to right field for a couple of RBIs. Back in the fourth inning. All that damage with two outs. Miguel Olivo homered in the second inning. And then Gutierrez drove in the other two runs with that two out single. That's where we stand here in the eighth. Edwin Encarnacion, his 39th home run. There goes Ackley. Yeah, good thing that Gutierrez fouled it back. Aaron Seavey had no shot at Ackley. He guessed right with Oliver. And, and he didn't go on first movement from Oliver. A little bit of a hesitation over there at first base. Watch him. Uh, 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 okay, now I'm going to go, and he looks back in. He has stolen 13 bases. He's only been thrown out three times this year, and not a bad time to start the runner. Oliver thought he caught that inside corner, didn't get the call. It's two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Ackley at first. There's a toss over to check on Ackley. Looked like he was thinking about running. 2-2 two -two pitch. That's where Darren Oliver, the pitch of action, he, he wants to get him out right here. So you try and take off thinking that it's going to be a strike. And if he happens to get the ball in the gap, he's got a little bit of an extra room. And there goes Ackley, and it's academic because Gutierrez strikes up. Darren Oliver, a couple of strikeouts in his inning of work. Blue Jays will bat bottom of the eighth. They trail by run. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Jose Cruz Jr. from the Blackberry Broadcast Studio.
on your favorite device. MLB TV Premium now also includes a free subscription to Bet Pro. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. A one-run ball game here at Rogers Center. Blue Jay fans have come up to support the Jays on their feet now as it'll be the bottom. Sierra goes and it's her Jays are down by one. Josh Kenny came on to end the seventh inning, struck out J.P. Aaron Seavey, the only batter he faced. He's got good stuff. Uh, Blue Jays going to have to string some hits together, I think, against Kenny. He doesn't give up a lot of home runs. He's only given up two all season long, so they're going to have to take what they can. Maybe a walk here, string two or three hits together against him. The league is only hit 183 against Kenny. He's nasty. And you can see he's got those two pitches. Sinker goes into the right hander, slider goes away. And that's always a big challenge for hitters. You've got two pitches going in opposite directions. Tough on the righties, too. Where right, he can bury that fastball inside. And Kenny got away with one right there. That was a hanging breaking ball that spun right out over the heart of the plate. Breaking ball stayed inside. Yeah, and got away with another one. That time Sierra didn't recognize him. Just got underneath that one. We've seen him hit pitches like that out of the ballpark. And they spin a breaking ball like that over the inner half, and he's able to get the barrel of the bat out in front. That time it was a little bit more of a defensive swing by Sierra. There's a good slider and Kenny strikes out Sierra. That's the first out of the bottom of the eight. Two strikeouts for Kenny since he entered the ball game. Gave him a couple of pitches to hit. He fouled him off and then you know he's going to come back with that breaking ball. That's the late breaker right there. A lot of bite to it. That he'll use for strikeouts. And now Anthony Ghost has got to figure out a way to get on base. Thinking about a bunt. Looks at one outside. Well, Ghost in this one run ball game really becomes a weapon if he can get on base. Ghost has 14 steals in 16 attempts. Number nine hitter Danny Echeverria is on deck. Now, one thing. He's got a little pop the other way, so I'm surprised that the left fielder. Game. Uh, Anthony ripped a triple to the gap in left center. Last time the Blue Jays were here at Rogers Center, he can really run. And when he split the outfielders, it was no contest. That triple came on Wednesday. Against the Orioles. And if he can get one over the head of the left fielder, it's going to be another one. Two balls and two strikes. One run game in the eighth inning. Outfielders are taught nothing over your head or nothing that splits you for extra bases. You can see Trayvon Robinson, the left fielder, is pretty shallow still. And moving in now. Bouncing ball up the middle. Ryan near second. Unloads in a hurry and Ghost is out. Two down. Kevin Millwood was the starter for Seattle. He goes five innings, allows just two hits, two earned runs. Walked the batter and struck out three. 
and the bullpen took over in the six and they have faced the minimum. Sean Kelly got a double play to end his sixth inning of work and he then retired the first batter top bottom of the seventh struck out Escobar. Oliver Perez got his man Rajay Davis pinch hitter and then Kenny has retired all three he's faced. Okay. Too much like last night when the bullpen came in for the Mariners late in the game. Echeverria pokes it over the Mariners dugout. Josh Kinney is the third reliever to work for Seattle. Foul tip off the glove of the catcher. One and two. Three two ball game here at Rogers Center. Mariners have that one run lead. The Yankees lead the Red Sox five one. Top of the seventh at Fenway. Interesting note in that ball game. Curtis Granderson is at two home runs. He now has 37. Robinson Cano hit his 30th. That's a foul ball. It's significant. Because the Yankees have a center fielder with 30 plus home runs and a second baseman with 30 plus home runs. It's the first time the Yankees have done that since 1940. All right. Joe DiMaggio. Joe DiMaggio was the center fielder. Joe Gordon. Joe Gordon was the second baseman. Really? Very good. So Robinson Cano and Curtis Granderson have done something special. Yeah. Him. Two great hitters. Oh, what a year for Granderson again. 37 home runs. Wow. Another one two pitch. Breaking ball missed downstairs. Another good ball game going on in Baltimore. 2 2 game. Top of the seven. Tampa Bay and the Orioles. Mm. Strike three, that fastball on the outside corner. How about Josh Kinney? He faced four Blue Jay hitters and has three strikeouts. We'll go to the ninth. Casey Jansen on. Get some work and try to keep it a one run game.
Bouncing back after losing last night to the Red Sox. Casey Jansen will come into the ball game, his 54th appearance. Jansen last worked on Sunday at Fenway, gave up a single, struck out a batter, and had a clean inning of work. And picked up his 20th save in that game against the Boston Red Sox. Lead off single by Loney and then retired the next three batters. So now Farrell's thinking right here, why are you bringing your closer and when you're down? Well, you got to keep it right there. A one run ball game. Maybe you can win it in the bottom of the ninth. Well, and it certainly factors in that you're facing the middle of the order. Three, four, five. Kyle Seeger. Two for four again tonight. Lines this one down the left side. That's a fair ball. Seeger is on fire. That's his sixth hit in the first two games of this series. He's on second with nobody out. Now for a preview of what's coming up on Connected. Here's Ivanka Osmak and George Papalis. Well, the hockey deadline September 15th closing quickly and the Mark Osmak and George Popolis will bring you up to date on just exactly what's going on in the NHL. That's coming up right after this ball game. Lead off double Kyle Seeger. Six hits in the series. It's a six for ten. Is that a bat or a wand that is swinging up there at the plate? <laughs> wow. It looks like a wand anytime he tries to sing it against the Blue Jays. To give you an idea, we mentioned he's got three hits tonight. He's three for five. That's 14 for 29. How's he hitting 250 coming into this game? He doesn't play the Blue Jays enough. Jesus Montero, broken back liner into center. Rasmus is there. One down. Kyle Seeger, he made a believer out of me. Yeah. And he's hitting the ball all over the ballpark. And that opposite field double down the left field line against Casey Jansen, and Jansen's been great all year. So Michael Sanders from Victoria, B.C., has been on base three times tonight. He's walked twice, singled, and grounded out. Blue Jays are aware that Saunders likes to go after that first pitch. They haven't given him anything to hit on the first pitch tonight. Yeah, nothing close and nothing straight. They've really tried to pound him in or throw off speed stuff early in the count. Knowing like that he likes to go up there swinging. First base is open after that double by Seeger. Ground ball. That's Maria. Goes out Sanders. Seager goes to third on the put out. We'll have lots more baseball tomorrow at 12 30 Eastern Time. Tampa Bay will be in Baltimore to wrap up their series. That's 9 30 a.m. Pacific on all four channels. Tampa Bay at Baltimore. Pennant complications and ramifications involved in that ball game. For Baltimore, they're still trying to figure out who they're going to pitch in that game because they've got some injuries. Jeremy Hellickson will go up against Wee Yin Chen, the left-hander. Yeah, they've had some injuries. Jason Hamill walked off the mound yesterday in his start with a knee problem. And I know Chris Tillman's had some, some problems where he had to miss a start. And Tillman, they're planning on Tillman pitching on Friday. I think he threw a side session and reports were good on Tillman's health. Miguel Olivo takes one outside. Two and out. Oh. 
Baltimore is playing that afternoon game because after that game they will fly out to the West Coast. They have a trip Oakland Seattle Boston. There's your season right there. Look show Walter has brought them all the way to mid September and I think their season is going to come down to that long road trip. Playing some good teams. Three and oh. Uh, and Buck Showalter has been very vocal about roster limits and changes in September. And when he gets to Seattle, he's going to see an awful lot of pitchers <laughs> late in the ball game. And I can bet you Buck will have a comment or two about that. Three and oh, two outs. <laughs> What a perfect pitch. Three and oh, catches the outside corner at the knees. Speaking of playing against the competition, the Seattle Mariners are going to have a say in who wins. Also, if you look at their schedule, I talked with Jeff Datch before the game, the third base coach. They play Texas after this Blue Jays series, Baltimore, Oakland. They still have a shot with the Angels. Three and two. So the Mariners. I think after this series, they say they play all the contenders the rest of the way out. In Baltimore, Texas, the Angels, Oakland, and the Angels. <laughs> Every one of those games has yeah. playoff implications. 3 2 2 outs. Kyle Seeger at third base with his third hit of the night. Got it. Casey Jansen all the way back from a 3 0 count. Leaves another base runner at third. The Mariners have stranded 12. Brett Lorry, Colby Erasmus, Edwin Incarnation. Jays down by a run. for the Mariners into the ball game is Tom Wilhelmson and he has been terrific as their closer moved into that closer's role in June and he's picked up 25 saves and 28 opportunities. Pretty impressive. Uh, he's also got a fastball and a good one. He can reach up to 98 miles an hour with some heavy sinking action but his big pitch I think is a wicked curveball. It's a good one. Defensively Justin Smoke comes on to play first base and Casper Wells into the ball game in left field. Now Rick Laurie leading things off here in the bottom of the night. Blue Jays down by a run 3 2. There's that good curve ball that misses outside. He'll use that as a strikeout pitch. He'll use it as a setup pitch.
97. That's a wicked combination. Good fastball and an overhand curveball. Yeah, biting. Very quick. Very late breaking curveball. The Blue Jays have been held to two hits. Two runs on two hits. That ties their season low in hits. They also were held to two hits on the 19th of August right here at Rogers Center by the Texas Rangers. Strike three call. Glory is called out on strikes. No hesitation from the home plan umpire. Brent Laurie thinks this curveball is up and possibly in. But you can hear home plate umpire Paul Elmo right away call that one a strike. It's the fifth strikeout by the Mariners bullpen since entering the ball game in the sixth inning. Romy well, Erasmus shows Bunt takes a strike. Another 97 mile an hour heater from Wilhelmson. Strikeouts per nine innings. The Mariners bullpen is second in the American League. Averaging a strikeout an inning. He'll also fade a changeup away from the left handers and that was it right there. About 89 miles an hour. Discount that now. He's going to come right after Rasmus here. Two and zero. Oh. Through that good hook. How about that? <laughs> Two and zero. Oh, he drops a hook on Kobe Rasmus, who was thinking fastball all the way. Excuse me. It's one and two is the count. Yeah, first pitch was that fastball that he faked a bun at. Late on that fastball. 97 again. They have made a concentrated effort to really pound fastballs up to Rasmus and, and in. And that sets up that breaking ball. If you get him thinking about that fastball, stays alive. He gets after that good curveball and fouls. Rasmus walked in the fourth inning with one out. That was ahead of Edwin Encarnacion. Edwin hit his 39th home run. A two run homer that gives him 99 ribbies for the season. Curveball. Back to back strikeouts for Wilhelmson. Two down. We'll be right back here. Tomorrow night, Henderson Alvarez will go to the mound for the Blue Jays. It'll be a 6.30 Eastern time start. That's the pregame show. Felix Hernandez will go to the mound for Seattle. As Henderson Alvarez will pitch against his idol. They're both from Venezuela. Felix Hernandez, the former Cy Young Award winner, won the Cy Young in 2010. Edwin Encarnacion. Blue Jays down to their last out. Interesting here. Will Wilhelmson give in to Encarnacion? I was thinking the same thing. Did they take a page out of what the Boston Red Sox did to Encarnacion and the Blue Jays when we were at Fenway Park? Two outs, nobody on. Pitch very carefully. Keep the ball away from him. If you end up walking him, you walk him, you pitch to the next guy. That's three that aren't even close. Yeah. And why would you mess around now? Encarnacion has driven in the only two Blue Jay runs tonight. Just go ahead and stay away from him and start with a fresh count. You know, the only thing about that is if you pitch around him and you put him on, you put the time run on and the winning run at the plate. Yeah, you know Escobar. Three, one, two outs. Oh, well, you knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah. Three, one hook when he doesn't really care if he walks him or not. Bet she throws another one. 
three and two. Here it comes. Three, two, two out. And he walked it. Not really that concerned. Wilhelmson took a shot. See if he could get Encarnacion to chase. So the tying run is aboard with two outs. Yunan Escobar has gone 0 for 3 so far. Edwin at first base has 13 stolen bases this year. Olivo is the best throwing catcher of the three Mariner catchers. He's thrown out 30% of the runners. Short lead for Encarnacion. Good rip by Escobar. Great rip. He was sitting for that fastball. It was just a little bit too outside for him where he had to reach for it. But he has put on some good swings lately. Just a little bit away from him. Mariners have only caught one base stealer out of 12 with Wilhelmson on the mound. There's a breaking ball lifted into center, and this should do it. Gutierrez makes the catch. Wilhelmson picks up his 26th save with a pair of strikeouts in the ninth inning. Blue Jays lose the first two of this series tonight, 3-2. Tomorrow, it'll be Felix Hernandez going to the mound for Seattle against Henderson Alvarez. Stay tuned for Connected coming right up.